Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Greg de St. Maurice. Greg, welcome. Thank you. And we're, we're here today to talk about uh, uh, food culture. Tell us a little bit about your uh, research in Japan. Well, I've done a lot of research on different things in Kyoto. So Kyoto's food culture, looking at things like place brands, the taste of place, um, globalization, and authenticity. Um, part of this research has involved uh, participating with local chefs in Kyoto in a research group where they get together and they discuss how to improve um, their techniques for making local cuisine. Um, and, and have they actually, I mean, there's a lot of this globalization has big effects on, on culture, on culinary practices all around the world, but uh, how have they uh, reacted to globalization? Well, they very much engage with globalization. Um, there are parts of it that they aren't so excited about, but they seek to engage with it and maximize the benefits of it to sort of network with people from outside, with other chefs, um, with institutions like UNESCO. Um, and they also learn about other cuisines and incorporate techniques that they've learned from that into their cuisine to make their Kyoto cuisine something that is very much a Kyoto cuisine of today, all the while trying to um, respect you know, traditions that have been around for a long time. And do you think this is an effective tactic? It absolutely is. Um, I think Kyoto is said to be where traditional Japanese cuisine um, has originated. And in Japan, people go to Kyoto when they want to eat, you know, authentic <laughs> Japanese food. Uh, and it's also been economically successful. So I think the tourism industry in Kyoto has benefited a great deal from what they have done. But at the same time, they've been able to help out farmers um, who grow traditional you know, heirloom vegetables um, in a way that places in other parts of Japan have had a more difficult time doing. And do you think, I was going to ask you, do you think this has had a wider impact on the community? It definitely has. I think what would it, 30 years ago, it would have been much more difficult to get some of these heirloom vegetables um, that are now available readily throughout Japan. Um, but they've, acti they've been active in other areas too, for example, trying to get uh, higher quality salts available to the public. And they're, these are chefs that are very much motivated by what the average consumer um, can get from their activity, even though most people like me can't go to their <laughs> restaurants and you know, just have a great meal because we can't afford it. But <laughs> Um, yeah, I think there's been a, there have been a lot of benefits for the larger community. Well, Greg, thank you very much indeed for uh, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.